So let's talk about gain staging in mastering. This is something that is important to understand, both for the sake of making your mastering chain sound as good as possible, but more importantly so that you use a workflow that helps you make the right decisions. And this is actually not very complicated at all, I will get to that a bit later in this video. But first we need to discuss a misconception about gain staging that is floating around on the internet. And that has to do with loudness and gain staging. And it goes a bit something like this. Instead of getting all the loudness in one big step at the end of the chain, you should add a little bit of gain in several steps throughout the processing chain. This way the final limiter won't have to work as hard, or something like that. And everything will sound amazing. And yes, there are occasions where you would end up with a gain structure like this, and we will get to that as well. But in general, I think that this is a terrible way of working, especially for beginners. Because it will stop you from making the best decisions, while also tricking you into believing that you are in fact making great decisions. It can be really confusing. Trust me, I have been there. So let's sort this out. My name is Thomas, and I have been mastering records professionally for more than 20 years. I run this channel together with Sofia and we also have a mastering company together. And on this channel we talk about audio mastering. Okay, so here we have a mix and I want to master this. In fact, I have already done that. I have added some effects, so I have a, an effect chain here. So let's have a listen to this. And this sounds quite okay, I think. It's an improvement over the mix. And I have intentionally done this mastering by using this technique of adding gain at every step of the way. And let's have a look at each of these steps. First we have the equalizer. This is doing some boosting in the mids and in the highs. Let's have a listen to this and I will use the bypass to disable this. So you can hear what's, what is happening in this plugin. Okay, so that's not a big difference, it's a bit more open, so that's nice. Then we have the next plugin, which is a dynamic equalizer, and this is um, compressing the low end a bit. And I have also compensated this with a bit of gain at the output. Okay, same thing here, not a big change, but we are keeping the low end a bit more in control. So let's move to the next one. This is a compressor. This plugin has several stages, but we are only using the compressor in this one. Okay, so now we are getting somewhere. With this plugin we get a big audible improvement of the sound. Everything gets closer, it's more upfront, and it sounds overall more exciting. So that's good, right? Let's move on to the next one. This is a saturator. So let's hear what this one is doing. Yeah, same thing here, we get a big improvement of the sound, right? So this makes everything sound better as well. We get a bit more excitement in this one. And then we have the next one, this is a clipper. So let's listen to that one. Okay, same thing here, it's a bit more subtle, but it's an audible improvement over the mix to my ears. And finally we have the limiter, let's listen to this. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, it's a bit more subtle, but we can hear that it's it's not degrading the sound at least, it makes things sound better while also peak limiting the mix to get this final loudness. And we can see that it's only working up to about 2 dBs, so it's not much gain reduction that is needed in this last step of the chain. We can see that we are reaching about minus 10 luffs, so it's it's not a very loud master in the end, but it's it's a moderately loud master. And we only needed to use about 1.5 dB of gain reduction in the last step. So the limiter really doesn't work that hard. So this really seemed like a good method to work, at least on paper. But as I said in the beginning of this video, I don't think this is a very good way of doing mastering. And there are mainly two reasons for that. And the first reason is that this way of working makes the bypass buttons useless. And that is because there is a loudness difference between before and after. So when you enable the plugin, then there is an increase in loudness. And we humans tend to prefer when things sound louder. We have a video about loudness bias if you want to dive deeper into this subject. So in this case, it would be very difficult to evaluate whether this plugin actually makes the mix sound better because it's also making the mix sound louder. And the other reason as to why I think this method is not very good is that it messes with the gain structure in the mastering chain. Because if I would, for example, remove this compressor plugin, then that would affect all the plugins coming after this uh, compressor. Because there would be less signal going into the saturator, so this would be less pushed into saturation and it would be less signal going into the clipper, so this would clip less of the signal, and there would also be a lower level going into the limiter, and the final output level would also be lower. So somehow, if we want to remove this compressor, then we would also need to compensate for the uh, level loss that um, this brings. So disabling a plugin in a chain like this is not as easy as pressing the bypass button because we will need to do more things later in the chain to compensate for the missing plugin. But chances are that if you are using this method for mastering, then the plugin will stay on. Because the plugin is adding loudness, then you will also get a bit of dopamine hit each time you enable the plugin because it will instantly make everything sound better. And it feels like you're making progress and that things are going in the right direction. It could also be the case that it's not making the mix sound better, only louder. It's actually much more difficult to make things sound better, but it's very easy to make things sound worse but louder. So let's have a look at another way to do this instead. I think this is a much better workflow for mastering. So I have prepared another mix here, so we will have a look at that one instead. It's the same mix and it's basically the same processing. We can have a listen, it sounds pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same processing, but with a completely different approach to gain staging. Now the first thing that happens in this chain is that there is an equalizer. There is no equalization going on, I'm only using this for adjusting the level of the signal. So the first thing that I'm doing in this chain is that I'm reducing the level with 1.5 dB. And that might seem like a random number, but it's not actually. If we take this mix and analyze the loudness of it, then we can see that the integrated loudness of this mix is minus 16.4 LUFs. And it's usually good to set a baseline level through the, the mastering chain, so that you always enter the chain at approximately the same level every time. And many plugins, especially if you have analog modeled plugins, they tend to sound the best when you hit them with a level of approximately minus 18 LUFs. So by reducing the level of the input with 1.5 dB, then I will reach approximately minus 18 LUFs at the beginning of the chain. So the next plugin in the chain is the equalizer, and this still have the same setting as before. The only difference now is that I have reduced the gain with 0.5 dBs, and this makes the overall loudness of the EQ sound approximately the same, so that we can use the bypass button without having this loudness change.
The next plugin is the, the dynamic uh, EQ. And in this case, I have just removed the output gain because this processing will not do that much for the, the loudness of, uh, of the signal. Let's have a listen. The overall loudness stays pretty much the same even when we are reducing the low end a bit. And whenever I'm in doubt, I will tend to give the loudness advantage to the bypassed version. So if the processed version still sounds better, although the bypassed version is a tiny bit louder, then I know that I have made the right choice. And this becomes more obvious if we listen to the, the next plugin, the, the compressor. And as you can hear, now it becomes much more difficult to hear what the plugin is actually doing. You really need to focus your ears more to hear what's actually going on here. And that is a good thing. And hopefully you are beginning to see the pattern here. I have tweaked the settings of each of these plugins so that they have unity gain when the signal passes through. And in this context, I'm using the word unity gain to mean that there is no change in the perceived loudness when I enable and disable the plugin. And the same thing goes with this saturator. This has also been compensated at the output so that we get the same loudness before and after. So once again, no drastic difference. I have tweaked the settings so that we get the same amount of saturation that we got in the first version, but now I have also removed the loudness from the equation. And in this case, the way I do this is I use the output gain of the plugin to reduce the level coming out from the plugin, because this output control is just a straight linear gain. There's nothing magical happening with this output gain. It's just a gain after the plugin. In most of these plugins, all the saturation and mojo and everything, the analog things that you want from the plugin, is happening before the output gain. I'm not aware of any plugin that is doing any additional uh, saturation or, or other cool things at the, the output stage. So let's look at the next plugin, the Clipper plugin. And this is a different setting from the other version, because in that I was using the gain. Let's have a look at how that looked. Uh, in the last version, I was using the gain control to push 1 dB into the clipping threshold, which, which is at 0 dB FS in this case. And this caused some clipping in the signal of, of uh, that version. Now, the main difference in the new version here is that uh, we are entering this plugin at a much lower level because we have kept unity gain through all the previous plugins in the chain. So now we enter this plugin at a much lower level. And I also want to keep the output level of this plugin at unity gain. And the simplest way to do this is to not use the gain control either at the input or the output, but only use the clip control. And what this does is that it moves the clipping threshold of this plugin. And I have put this at minus 8 dB. And this will make this plugin do as much clipping on the signal as the previous plugin did. But the main benefit now is that I have unity gain through this plugin, so I can easily disable or enable this plugin and listen for what it does without having any loudness bias involved and without risking to mess up the gain structure for the rest of the chain. And so far we have kept unity gain through all of the plugins in the chain, but the exception now is the final limiter. Here we actually have all the gain that we need in order to make the master as loud as we want it to be at the end of the chain. So here we have the, the final jump in level. And now you might think, well, doesn't this mean that the limiter also will be working way too much because we do all of this level gain at one stage in the mastering chain? But that isn't really the case because we can still have things earlier in the chain that will 
shave off some peaks of the signal before entering the peak limiter. And I would say that in this case, maybe the compressor is reducing some of the peaks. The saturator might very well do some reduction of the peaks as well, but the main reduction of the peaks comes from this clipper. So if I hit play, then we can see that the, the gained reduction of the peak limiter is still below 2 dBs. And that is exactly as it was in the previous version as well. So basically we have achieved the same result as we did in the first version, but without having this incremental gain change for each step of the way. So now we can have a look at some of the benefits of doing it in this way. If I, for example, take this, this version and I will copy it over here so that we have a new clean version to work with. Now we can see that since each of these plugins have been loudness matched, they are unit gain, then it's very easy to, um, to enable them or disable them as we want and really make sure that each of them is actually doing a good job. And I think that the equalizer is doing a good job. It's a bit bass heavy in the mix and this is a way to remedy that. I might have chosen to reduce the low end instead, but it works quite well to, to push other parts of the frequency spectrum as well. It's a yin and yang. This is pretty much the same as lowering the bass. So I think this can stay, but the next one I'm not too sure about. I think maybe we can try to leave it off for now. Uh, the compressor, I think it's compressing a bit too much. And one way to fix this is to use the mix button to just blend the clean and the compressed signal. So I think something like this. That's a better amount of gain reduction, I think. And as you can hear, you really need to focus your listening more now to hear the actual differences because we have removed the loudness from the equation. So it takes a bit more effort to actually tweak the, the plugins now, but I think the reward is much bigger because now we are doing actual progress with each of these plugins. I do feel that the master that we have is a bit crunchy and I believe that it comes from this one. And this plugin has a very nice feature for uh, adjusting the amount of crunch without having to tweak the individual settings. And it's, that is to use this density parameter here. And what the density does is that if you increase it, then it will increase the input level while also reducing the output level with the same amount. So by reducing this density, then we can also reduce the input level to the saturator while also increasing the output level. So by tweaking this, then we can decide how much of this um, saturation do we want? How much should we push this? And I needed to tweak the output level a bit now to compensate for the, the reduced amount of uh, uh, saturation because the saturation in itself will make the signal sound a bit louder as well. So now we get a little bit of excitement from the saturation, but not so much saturation that it gets crunchy. And I think I like this better. As for the next plugin, the clipper, I'm not sure that this should be. I'm not a big fan of using hard clipping on a mix. You can see how it sounds with and without. The kick drum does get a bit crunchier and we get a bit more clarity on the kick drum especially. 
but I don't think I want that much crunch, so I will increase the threshold of this so that I get less clipping. And that's a bit better, I think. Just enough clipping so that we get a bit of crunch on the kick drums. I could also leave this off, I'm not really sure, but let's keep it enabled. And now we can see that the, the final limiter is working a bit more than it was before. But I think that sounds good. So I hope you can see now that this way of working makes it much easier to actually decide what each of these processes should do. Because I believe that every processor that you add to the mastering chain should have a purpose. There should be something that you want each of the plugins to do. Otherwise, just remove it. So when would it be a good thing to use the method that we used in the first version, that is to increase the gain at each step of the chain? Well, I would say that if you are mastering in the box, then there is really no reason to use that method at all, because each plugin usually have an output level that you can use to compensate for any changes in gain that has happened within the plugin. That's the main purpose of the output level as I see it. But if you're using analog equipment, then there might be a different situation. Because in the analog world, then we have more parameters to consider. We have a noise floor, we have clipping points of each processor, and we have the clipping points of the DA converter and the AD converter. So gain staging becomes a bit more critical there. So in a professional analog mastering setup, then you might find these kinds of things, that the gain structure is not based around unity gain through each uh, processor, but it's rather based on operating each piece of equipment at the optimal level. But gain staging in the analog domain and interfacing analog and digital, that's a big subject and we won't go any deeper into that in this video. Just be aware that the problems with increasing gain in each step is the same in the analog domain as it is in the, in the digital domain. You will still need to be aware of the loudness bias and counteract that in some way when you are assessing the sound. So to summarize what we have said in this video, the method that I prefer to use when I'm working is to find an optimal level that you want your mastering chain to work in. In this case, I have chosen minus 18 LUFs. It's just approximate. You can choose whatever you want, but plugins tend to work best at that level. So use a plugin at the, at the beginning of the chain just to set the level. In this case, I have used a, an equalizer with all the bands off, but there are other ways to do this. You will probably find something in your door that can change the gain without doing anything else. And then keep all the plugins in the chain at unity gain. So when you press the bypass button, then there will be no shifts in the perceived loudness. That will make it much easier to decide if the plugin is actually doing anything good. And it will also make it easier to disable a plugin that isn't doing its job properly. You can switch plugins in and out easily without messing up the gain structure. And then you do the final peak limiting in one big step. In this case, I have increased 10 dBs with a ceiling of one dB. So we have nine dBs of gain at the end of the chain. The numbers doesn't really matter. It kind of depends on what level you want to end up with in the end but you can still use other limiters, or as in this case, a clipper earlier in the chain to reduce the peaks so that the final limiter doesn't have to work as hard. So you can still stack limiters on top of each other. Just make sure that you have unity gain through each of the limiters, and then you can sort of reduce the peaks before entering the final limiter where you have the actual gain to reach the final loudness level. And if you want some more tips on how to use plugins for mastering, I suggest that you get our free PDF, Five Mastering Strategies Using Free Plugins. There you will get some great strategies that I use all the time when I'm mastering, as well as some tips on free plugins that you really should get if you don't have them already. You will find the link in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you got something out of it. If you did, please hit the like button, that really helps us, and also consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification. And of course, feel free to leave a comment as well. We try to read and answer as much as we can. 
So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.